Grandmaster Mickey Adams scores a critical win against Mikhail Antipov. Going into round 10, Mickey has six and a half points. He joins us in our studio. Mickey, a very interesting win today. A good result, but a very up and down game. Yeah, I was just incredibly lucky, really. Uh, I didn't know this night G4 at all. And, uh, well, OK, it's not such a strong move, but uh, I sort of played this rookie too, and it just got more and more awkward. I somehow, I was never some good moment to play H3. I thought he was going to play H5. And uh, then he came up with this very strong move, uh, Queen H5. Uh, it was a very good move, actually, after Bishop C2. I didn't think things were so bad. And then Queen H5, and he's threatening to take on D4 and take on H2. And H3, Knight F6, he's threatening Bishop H3, Bishop G2. It's, it's really... OK, Bishop E3, I was already desperate and probably not a very good idea. It uh, looks like I, things have already gone wrong for Well, Bishop E3, I thought, OK, he would take it. But of course, he didn't take immediately and played G5. And then, OK, I, I don't know. I mean, I was thinking, I was thinking the game's not going to last very long, but... Uh, Somehow the only thing that the only hope that I sort of had was somehow around here that uh, when he was going f5, I mean, I, I can see I was going to lose a piece, but I thought if I can kind of get this wall of pawns, uh, at least then my king is safe. I don't know if e4 was the best move. Maybe it was, maybe there were other possibilities. Uh, but after this kind of rook f2, d5, knight d2, then I thought, okay, at least... Uh, at least I straighten out my structure, and the bishop on a7 is not playing for a very long time. Yeah, let's just show and, what... And, you know, he has the, there is this kind of weak pawn on h7, so... Right, so you lose a piece by force because bishop e4 yeah, runs I mean, into d5, just, you don't want that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult because I have to be a bit careful he doesn't go rook d6 to h6 and just mate me. That was the other. He can drive rook d6, then I go knight e4, but I still get quite a lot of pawns, and it's not mate immediately, so... I mean, okay, I'm, Black was still doing very well, but okay, I don't think it was so straightforward to win. And then somehow I tricked him around the time control with this uh, with this F4 idea. Because okay, we're going to ask you to come a little oops. forward. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, thank you. Perfect. Yeah, because uh, I mean, I think the problem is Rook takes H, Rook takes G4. I now have this Rook takes H5, and if he takes, I can take on G4. He has to play Rook F5. And I, I, have, I think I can play rook h6. Nine. Okay. And the bishop on b6 is hanging and he's still pinned. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a kind of tactical thing. So, I mean, he, so then he went for this. Yep. Sorry. sorry yeah. Just yeah right then here. he went for this knight takes h4, but then I'm getting these two pass pawns. I mean, it's clear he could have defended better. I think rook h6 was a mistake for sure. But, okay, I mean, it's. I mean, this, of course, black should be doing well here, but it's not so easy because it's easy for me to play. King f2, queen d3, rook h1, and I'm pushing, <laughs> pressing the h pawn, and he has to, he's in this awkward pin, and he has to try and decide how to untangle. I mean, Mickey, for me, it's amazing to hear that because here you are, you're down a piece, your king looks relatively not very safe. Uh, you know, you've got these pawns, but they look weak, and then you just start your king march to the. Uh, but my king is not so uh, so weak because okay, I have like seven pawns to protect <laughs> you do it have now. A I lot mean, of pawns. I have a lot of pawns, so it's you know on f2. I mean, there I came to d1. It's not uh, you know on d1. It's quite safe. The knight on d2 is protecting Strong almo nerves. almost all the checking squares around king on d1, queen on d3. So it's not. I think my king is quite safe, but of course it's practical chances. I mean, yeah. normally, normally I would be very, you know, very happy to save a draw, and uh, you know, sometimes I would lose. So I mean, to win the game is totally unexpected. Also, but, uh, in in the kind of tournament situation that you're in, you have to take a little bit. Well, of I think both. Chances. Yeah, I mean, both I of you have to. Both take of chances. us probably wanted to win, so yeah, obviously that was. That was maybe a factor, but I think by the time control, it just got very random. And yes, lots of as things, it does. <laughs> lots of things happen. I had a bit more time, so maybe that helped. Right. And uh, maybe at this moment, you said that, you know, even though you knew you're probably slightly worse, your evaluation was that practically you still have chances here. Well, OK. I mean, I just knew that I had a kind of clear plan, and that's, I know what I was doing. Moved and I can game. make quick moves, and that's always important in a, practical, in a practical game. It's a different... Uh, you know, the theoretical assessment is not so important when you're playing. Right, and where do you think he made the final mistake? Because suddenly it just uh, looked like... Well, I, I wasn't sure. I thought rook h7 instead of rook h6 because, uh, well, I don't know, that was that was his 40th move. I don't know, it seemed more logical to me to go... Yeah, just yeah, rook yeah. h7. Just because, okay, well, he's at least attacking the pawn on g7. 
just to play rook h6, where he doesn't even attack the pawn, which seemed a bit strange. I mean, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe queen f3 was good. Queen f3 to f8 looked quite... Uh, Looked quite uh, promising because yep. rook g7, queen f8, check right. wins the rook, uh, and you know it's not so easy to for him to dislodge. I mean, maybe it's just maybe it's just very good in this, this pawn on g7, and it's not. Yes. So I wasn't really sure what was happening. I knew I was doing. Yeah, I mean, I knew I was doing very well, but I didn't know. So that pawn got. It was winning. Got well, from g3 to g7. Knight g8. Well, I don't know. I mean, knight g8. He played rook f8. Well, I guess he could try king d7. I mean, that obviously doesn't look good with this. I don't know. I was thinking maybe knight f3 to come knight e5 check looked quite... Yeah. I mean, he could play rook h5, knight e5, take, take, but I think that's probably lost for him. I don't know. It looks bishop c7, knight g5. It, it looks pretty bad. It looks really Queen bad. Queen e4, but it doesn't, it doesn't really look like... Somehow I had the feeling White was probably winning, and obviously I don't have to play knight f3 immediately anyway. I could look for some other move, so... Queen F3 maybe might be another possibility. And at what moment did you realize that you actually had winning chances in the game? Well, okay, no, no. Once I once I got the three pawns and these two pass pawns, yes, I thought because also practically now, I mean, he's obviously very unhappy yes. that he messed up and psychologically uh, as yeah, well. Yeah, and also he didn't have much time for his. He was down to three seconds on a couple of moves, so it's not such an easy position yes. to uh, to hold when the uh, with the uh, with the pawns coming down and some checks. Yes. Rook F1, there's lots of tactic, tactical ideas, so it's not an easy position to defend short of time. I have to say that this game is uh, very fascinating, but also not a very usual Mickey Adams win. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I had a lot of games I was just better uh, doing very well, and I just didn't win. I think no, I three, mean, or, three or four games I was just, you know, yeah. grinding some endings and very nice positions and just not... <laughs> not winning and making a mess of them. So I mean, this game. I maybe didn't, this is how I didn't we really deserve to, to win, but you know, maybe, maybe I got some of the points I dropped there back in this game. Uh, going into the last round, um, feelings, approach about approach for tomorrow. Are you thinking about it? No, not too much. I, mean, <laughs> I probably have black, so I mean, I just have to play normally and see what happens. I mean, it's not so uh, not so easy to have with black, but I don't know. I mean, the pairings aren't. It's not completely certain, of course, but. Uh, it's very difficult to do much with black in the last round, so I, I don't know who I'll play either. So it's uh, I'll just wait and see for the pairing, what the pairings are. Right. Well, that was a fascinating game, a very interesting one for the audience. Uh, thank you for your time, and good luck for tomorrow. Thank you.